So let's talk a bit more about what is the actual shape node in Maya and what it does. So what you saw here in the previous example is that I've actually got multiple different objects here, but they're looking they're, they're they're looking different and they have they're basically sort of part of the same network, but they're actually showing different stages of like this final one here. So what's actually going on here? So let's just jump in and graph this and see what's going on. I'm just going to so first off, just to clarify what an actual shape is, sorry, or what an object in Maya needs. So anything that is an object in Maya that needs to be rendered or that you need to see in the viewport, usually it will have two things. It will have a transform and it will have a shape. So the transform will usually be what you will be selecting by name, like pcube one, while the actual shape will be your P cube shape one. So if we look at, for instance, in Maya here, if I select this, this is called P cube one, but you can see underneath shapes, we will have P cube shape one. And anytime that you're seeing all of these different inputs, that can either be inputs to the shape or it can be input to the actual transform. So you can see now I've selected the P cube one, but if I just press down on my keyboard, it actually shows me all of the inputs that is to the P cube shape one. So that is why you can't, you can't have a shape on its own in Maya. It will always need to be part of a transform. It needs to be parented underneath something as well. So you can see that in the outliner, if I do click on shapes, you can actually see that underneath P cube one is P cube shape one. So it's parented underneath here. So let's just jump back here now. So I'm just going to get rid of the transforms now because we don't really care about them for this. And let's see what's actually happening here. So we already looked briefly at this, but we see here that we start with the polycube one. Then we have our poly smooth face, our bevel, our poly poke, our poly extrude. And then finally we have our polycube shape. Now let's just organize these a bit. And we can see that. So what's really happening here is that we will, what we're seeing is the same thing as we saw with the uh, locator. Where basically we start with the polycube one and what that is responsible for is creating the original polycube shape. After it's created that shape internally, it will basically give that to the output value here, the output plug, which is of type mesh. Now that then can feed into either a shape or it can feed into any other node that has an input type of mesh, which is basically any deformer or any of these poly operations. There's a bunch of these. So as long as it has that input, you can feed that in. So this is basically how I'm hijacking this thing. So originally when I just created this, I just had my polycube one where I had my polycube. And then when I added a uh, smooth, this deformer got added into this hierarchy here. And then when I beveled, that got added in between the poly smooth and the P cube here and so on and so on. So that's the only thing that's really happened. As soon as you add in a new, be it a deformer or be it like uh, any operations like this, it's all just actually inserting in between and hijacking these kind of output plugs. And that's exactly the same thing that I did with these objects. I just copy this and I copy uh, connected directly to the in mesh of a shape. And that's how we can actually see each of these representing what each individual node does. Because that's a really important thing to understand is that a shape node is only really defined by the data that's in there. And that data is um, any vertex, any edges, any faces, any UVs, all of that data that's on there, you can modify. And you can either modify it by pushing it through nodes, 
or you can modify it directly by selecting it and you know doing this or you can actually whoop, if i can find these again now oh there they are you can connect into the in mesh as soon as you're connecting into the in mesh you're then just starting to override the whole shape and the cool thing about that is that you can really really override and change the whole shape that's basically like how all of these work because remember here you really just start out with a cube and then that cube suddenly gets more edges it gets more faces and that's because of what the poly smooth face does so the poly smooth face takes in some mesh applies some operations to it and gives you out a brand new mesh so that basically means that you can completely override what a shape does and what it is based off how you manipulate this. Oops, sorry. So let's have a quick little look at that. So I'll just do a new scene. So I'll just do the same thing. I'll just create a cube here now. And you know, I'm just gonna create a sphere as well. So I'll move this sphere over here. And I'm just going to, oops, sorry, delete history on this sphere. So I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to just go into my node editor and what I'm going to do if I can just open up this a bit more is I'm going to take this uh, cube shape and I'm going to uh, just organize here a bit so as I mentioned you can actually on most of these nodes output but the cube shape is you can both input to it and also output. So what we can do is we can actually say, hmm, I actually like what this shape is doing. I want to pass that on to another shape. So if I now take this, the I can just take the world mesh and connect that to the in shape, sorry, the in mesh of the sphere, and boom, this is now a cube because we're just overriding that data completely. So if I now go in here and I modify this, we're going to get if I just turn on here, it's going to be exactly the same. Now, if I go in here and I start to move these as well, you can see that that also goes through because what we're doing is when we're modifying these, we're modifying the shape and we're just copying the end result of that out here. So if we had any deformers on here or anything, that would also go through. So let's just add in a deformer here. So I'll do a nonlinear and I'll just do a bend deformer. So if I now do that, you can see that what we're getting here, again, just flows through. So let's just see now what we actually have. So what we actually have now, instead of just having the polycube, we actually now have the polycube, we got the tweak one, and we got the bend. So let's just see what's actually happening here now. Ooh there's a lot more happening here now. So we've gotten a couple more things in here. We suddenly have a shape org, we've got some group IDs, group parts, we've got the tweak, we've got the bend groups, and there's a lot of things really happening here. Now, we'll look a bit more into shape org uh, later on, but the main idea to understand here is that before, right, we just had the polycube one that went into our cube shape. Uh, and now we just add in a bit more. I can clean up some of this by just ignoring the the turning off the show auxiliary nodes. That's going to clean this up a tiny bit, and um, so it's a bit easier to understand. But it's not going to connect everything correctly. So you can see now, if I, for instance, have if I select this, click here, if I graph it, you can see that now we actually have the whole starting chain here so you can see this go it starts off here it outputs some mesh goes into the input geometry we won't go into the group parts uh, that much but just understand that it's sort of a container that is responsible for telling the deformer kind of which parts of the mesh it should be able to work on so uh, we're not going to use this at all um, but just know that you do need this if you see this in your kind of graphs don't delete them they just need to be there 
So, you know, that goes from here. It outputs the geometry into the tweak, and that goes into the bend one group parts. That goes into the bend. From the bend, it does its calculations, and it outputs that to the cube shape. And then again, what we had from the cube shape into our sphere shape. And that's sort of like the whole basis of modifying meshes and everything in Maya. If I were to go in here and if I just said, you know, if I want to just cut a line here, you can now see that after our bend, we've just added a new polycut node, which we can see popped up here. And again, it's, a me it's, a, it's still a node, right? So what we can do is, because this is actually live now, we have to delete our history. We can still go in and change a lot of these things. So having that thing in here, having the, the history and knowing how to manipulate that might be very, very powerful. But it's also something that you have to be very, very careful with and do a lot of testing. Now, what this could be useful for is perhaps in some cases where you wanted to to do some cutouts, but then just delete the history afterwards. But being able to know that while you're running your code, you might be able to go in and modify these things um, is something that I've used before and can absolutely be very, very useful. So it's just important to understand that people think that Maya isn't procedural. Maya is procedural, it's just not very good at it. So there's definitely things that you can do, but there's absolutely something like Houdini is a lot more built for it just because of how you can actually manipulate the data. In Maya, it's um, very one directional and it can very easily break. So it's, it's not always the greatest thing, but it's a thing that just happens.